What's up, Just Sayers? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Say It podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale. And this week's guest is one of the best. He is the dapper. He is, just look at him, just, just so chic and ready to go. He's a stand-up comedian, actor, host of the podcast Endless Honeymoon with his wife, Natasha Legero. He's also the author of the 2012 memoir, Casher in the Rye, the true tale of a white boy from Oakland who became a drug addict, criminal, mental patient, and then turned 16. And his latest book, Subculture Vulture, a memoir in six scenes, is available everywhere now. It's Moshe Kasher. Yeah! That is the intro. LFG, let's freaking go. Oh, freaking! Yeah, I've been doing doing church stuff, so I'm not saying the F word, but I still- You gave it up for Lent? Well, I just, I'm still in touch with my Gen Z roots, Mm. so I'm still LFG all the way, but it's Let's Freaking Go in the name of glory. Good for you. Good for you. I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you for coming. Well, I came here today to talk to you about church. Why me? When's the last time you went to a worship ceremony? What kind of worship? The cock worship, definitely. Well, it was definitely last Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. It's always during- I heard about that. I know. The elders at the church are I upset know. about it's it. It's a new moon in Virgo or whatever. <laughs> so that's that's when we like to do. I don't know. That's actually a really good question. I, 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 You know what? I always feel like every time during the holidays, I'm like, I'm going to go to church. Yeah. Did you, to, did you church growing up? Yeah. Yeah. But off and on. We mm-hmm. went for like a, a good while- just because I felt like it was like the thing to do. Yeah. I also went to like a private school for part of high school. So it was like, I, I feel now that was my mom, like trying to like, <laughs> like be around the parents to be like, oh, we go to church as well. Sure, sure. But we were like religious, but it wasn't like. What style? What set you claim? I mean, we were, uh, I mean, we went, I feel like we went from like Southern Baptist to Ooh, like that's the real Christian. Shit. Yeah. That's, Southern Baptist is that dank, that dank Christianity. It's that hard kush of yes, Christianity. It, it, is this the purple kush? <laughs> yes. It, they're on some no dancing, no gambling Oh, shit. it's got diamonds in it. You know, yeah. it's like, it's, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a two hitter. <laughs> you got to, <laughs> you take two and you're like, <laughs> I think I'm done. I think I'm good. I'm yeah. on the, I'm in the corner staring. Staring at darkness. Like, <laughs> that's definitely like you start questioning everything that's wrong with you. I, I and, don't know what's going on with me, but I, my algorithm, you know how you can, you tell, you can tell what's really going on in your soul by mm-hmm. your algorithm because the algorithm knows you better than you know you. Okay. It's all evangelical Christianity for me. I'm like, a, <laughs> I'm like a Jew from the Bay Area and I'm just like getting a, like really invested in the comments section on like biblical exegists versus like a guy that's left the church versus there's this couple in LA. I'm, on, they were on some LFG. Let's freaking go okay. shit. I can't. I'm obsessed with them. They 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 they're like kind of hip hop looking kids, and they go like, "The Lord told us to open up a Christian based Bible themed dance club, mm. so we're gonna do it." And then so they have this like, but then they come in with all this defensiveness because all of the people in their comments are like, this is this is against the, the word of the Lord. So we they're getting trolled by their own followers. They're getting trashed. Yeah. So then they come back in and they go, just so you know, <laughs> we put a Bible between the crotch of every dancing couple and like, you can't come in here with any drug paraphernalia and I want to go to, the, how good would it be if you and me went to this club? I would go. It would be so fun. Is it a club or is it it's, like... Is it's it like, like one of those Christian raves? Yes, it's like a dance club for Bible believers. What are they, were they like... Jam out to DC Talk and yeah. Amy Grant. <laughs> yeah, and they like they do uh, lines of communion wafers. Oh, they can't do coke anymore, but they can. Snort they just the they body put it on Christ. their tongue and they're that's like, right. they're like the body of Christ, you guys. Mm, that's the real shit that's right there. <laughs> the real real. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's wild. See your algorithm and my algorithm. This is how you know. Let's. I, I just want to see what yours is. If you go to Instagram, yeah. Um. And look, hit the little magnifying glass. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And oh, what whoa, is, whoa, weird. It says that my book became a bestseller on Friday. Sorry, did it really? Yeah, it did. Congratulations. No, it did, though. It Congra- did, though. Get your copy now. Okay, yeah, before, the, before Mine it's too late. Says I okay, made... I'm on this. I got Kate Berlant is my top hit here. That's good. Okay. Robert Kennedy. He's, okay. He's third in. Uh, then I got, this is very typical of me, um, an, an ethnic person cooking in a pot in a field in like Mongolia or something mm, like that. Mm-hmm. That's called a uh, mukbang. Do you know about mukbang? Oh, mukbang. Yeah, or uh, mukbang. Yeah. Is it, it might be bong. I think it's mukbang. Yeah, where they just eat all the stuff. I got mukbang. Oh, Jeffrey Epstein is oh, in, is that's in there. It always but you know, <laughs> if you're a Jewish, he's coming up in your algorithm. He, that's Uncle Jeff. Um, 
DJ stuff. I got some some rave stuff in here. Uh, and then I got a man that I think you'd like. Who? Can you zoom in on that? Oh God, no, no, just, no, no, no. That's like that's like a Tom Segura video. That's like yeah, something yeah, yeah, he yeah, would yeah, watch. Where it's yeah, just that's right. just big. see, mine is just gay Madonna, drag race, thirst trap. See this, and Amy Schumer's face. No, okay, Justin. This means that you are a normal person. Mm -hmm. This means that your your interests align with your identity. Thank that's you. That's what makes sense. Okay, your shit should be gay Madonna, like. That's who you are. You are gay Madonna. We all call you that behind your back. I knew it. This That's what we time. say. <laughs> but why do I have why do I have Thai women cooking in a field and then a rave DJ who looks like he's been doing coke for a half a decade and then a, a face tattooed woman? There's Shane Gillis. That makes sense. Uh, Another DJ. <laughs> the and, tattooed woman was Shane Gillis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's just it's all over the place mm -hmm. and none of it comports to my it real makes, identity. It makes me it makes me go crazy. Mine's a bunch of like it's funny too because I can't remember. Oh, I was with my friend who is female and and I went through the search thing and she was like, Oh my God, what's that? Like she freaked out because it's all just like like man whores, just like in sweatpants. And I'm just like, I didn't ask for this. I don't know who these people are. It's but this is the Instagram being like the problem look. is your attention stays on the man whore for like five seconds longer than mm -hmm. everything else. And they go, Oh, Justin, he wants he wants sweaty buns. And so they deliver you sweaty buns. Why was I though? Why was I on for about a year? I was in a a, a black Grow, like African American grown and sexy algorithm. Okay, it would be like, "Hey, it's Gladys Knight's birthday," and then the next thing would be like, "Look at this beautiful black newborn," and and hey, get, give it up for Marvin Gaye and Luther Vandross. It's oh. Mar and I'm like, well, I mean, I like this stuff. <laughs> I'm, I don't know why this represents my identity. You're like how now I'm just getting targeted for like pet food stuff. Yes, it's weird too because um, I just got a new dog. She's the sweetest thing, and. The breed, they're like, oh, be careful because their teeth and their gums, like after they're three, they need to be taken care of. So it's like, oh, yeah, I need to clean her teeth. The phone listened. I, I got a powder. I put it in her food every morning. And now I'm like, oh, that I'm that guy. I know. That's why I just got, I'm getting all these ads for like C4 plastic explosive because I like mildly mentioned to yeah. my militia, like maybe we should do an attack. Right. And it's like, that was just How me. did you know? Right. I'm just right. playing with the idea. Mm -hmm. There's nothing serious. You're putting about words together. Yeah. They're the ones listening. They're and, being nosy. And hopefully this uh, broadcast uh, podcast that we're uh, recording right now, like maybe this, hopefully this word won't get out yeah but if you see something you got to say something allegedly yeah but what if i don't want to get involved that's right yeah, yeah see something say the, the difference if I see something i'm like did i yeah mind your business is, away. is an older bit of advice than see something say something mm -hmm. i was raised mind your business see something say something that's post 2001 but it's also if you see something say something is a great opportunity to gaslight someone mm -hmm. because if you see something and you're supposed to say something then if the person who did the thing can be like, you're insane. Yeah. No, I saw it. I swear. No, you need to go behind a padded wall. No, wait. You know, I've been, I've, I've been behind a padded wall. Have you? Tell us. I've been in, I've been in, um, one mental institution. I kind of look like I'm wearing the jacket. No, I'm really digging this fit. But this fit also does suggest a bit of like, uh, you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. No, like, no, no. no. It, well, this is very high fashion, but if it had long sleeves and I was tied this well, way. Yeah. What I mean, like, you're not tied that way. That's right. <laughs> I you're see so, what you're saying. You're so it's right. It's giving asylum chic. Thank you for seeing me. I, <laughs> and I, and I will say something. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest, um, this is all when I was like a young teen. Uh -huh. The funniest, it was very dark, but I went to this kind of high school. I kept getting kicked out of school. Like, I, I, I dropped out basically in uh, eighth grade was the seventh grade was the last year that I made it. And then eighth grade, I dropped out. I flunked. And then I got, I kept getting sent to like further down the rabbit hole versions of continuation school until I landed in a school in uh, the Bay Area called a severely emotionally disturbed school. And that that's was, what it was called. That's what it was designated. <laughs> it wasn't, that wasn't the name of the school. I was like, that's it, like monster high shit. <laughs> but by the way, it was, it wasn't much better. It was called Se the Seneca Center for the Severely Emotionally Disturbed Youngster. What do they call it for short? <laughs> uh, an SED school. Okay, actually, is what God, it was called. It's crazy. And they had a padded. No pun intended. They had a padded cell in in the classroom, and I remember the first day I went there. I was first of all, I took the short bus. 
Yeah. I used to take the short bus. It was so, and I was like trying to be like cool and like a gangster back then. You know, I mean, I was 13 and I was white. Yeah. So I, LFG, Oakland. LFG. It was yeah. just pre-LFG, to be honest. Nobody mm -hmm. said, let's freaking go back then, you know? Uh, so I would, it would be so funny when the short bus would drop me off at school, uh, at home, I would ask them to drop me off like half a block away oh. and I would like look both directions and then I would kind of like pimp walk the, <laughs> the last half of the way home. Yeah. Some of the people in the short yellow bus had that walk, but it was not. And a, pimps. They yeah, were probably yeah. pimps as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the SED school, I remember the first day I went there, I was like, oh, I need to absolutely get out of here. Like, and so that's how I knew I wasn't totally around the band is because I knew how embarrassing it was. But they would, um, the, a kid stabbed another kid in the neck with a pencil. The first, not like severely, but enough that he got drug. And this is my first 10 minutes in the classroom. He God. got drug from his desk into the padded cell uh, in the, that was in the classroom. It was on site. So was it, was, so is it in the classroom? Is it kind of like an, not what's it called? A, um. Like a panic room where they like yes. open the door and throw them in there That's in right. the classroom. Yep. There were two tiers of discipline at this school. Wow. There was if you talked out of uh out of order in in any way, I mean, I'm saying one errant word, they would pick you up, not pick you up, but they would make you get up and put your fate your nose on this like concrete um pylon like this and stand still at attention for 10 minutes. And if you went beyond that, padded cell. Anyway. Comedy is a lot of fun. Yeah, but Pat itself feels like... You like it? Right? You think it's kind of nice. Well, it's just soundproof and comfortable, and you don't have to... It's kind of beautiful it's in a way. Just you and your voices in your head. I had no voices in my head. I was oh. just a, I was just a juvenile delinquent. That makes us different. <laughs> yeah. What do, the, what do yours say? <laughs> Not like multiple personality, but it's just like sometimes I talk to myself. I've always talked to myself. Is since that right? I was a kid. Yeah. Is that? Do you write in dialogue with yourself? Your mm -hmm. comedy? It's mm -hmm. like you just chatting with yourself. Yeah. Well, you're very. I have noticed. I I, I brought <laughs> you up like this the other day here at the store. Here at the store, um, <laughs> that I notice and I admire it. You're very. Um, Contempt, like current. Mm -hmm. that when there's something that's happening in the world, you're writing about it. Like I, I don't write to. like that. Like I, I, I sit around waiting for a thing to happen to me, and then I write about that, which is a bad system. I'm trying to do that now. Well, it's a bad system because you got to wait for shit to happen to you. And by the way, it becomes an increasingly worse system the older you get because I'm so much more. I'm so much more boring than I used to be. I, know, like, I was like, I got a dog. I know. <laughs> I used to be out in the world, like you know, hooking up with people yeah. and going out to clubs. And, and having wild experiences. I'm like a dad now. It's like, I just uh, wait for my daughter to say some dumb shit. And I'm like, okay, I got some material now. You have some shaming cream on your Oh, neck. do I? The, this whole time? <laughs> a few moments later. I really appreciate that. Are we recording? Yeah. yeah we you're fucking producers. Just so you know, mm -hmm. to rip the fourth wall, mm -hmm. you're fucking derelict producers yeah. sat here for 15 fucking minutes mm -hmm. while I had shaving cream under my ear I know. and let me just go off. It's yeah. like, what the fuck is it? What is this operation, dude? Land. Land. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Valerie Cherish from the comeback. I'm going to do this. Land. I'm going to do one more. Land. You're doing a T. I'm doing an F for fucking fired. You're fired. It's freaking fired. Freak You're freaking, freaking fired. fired. <laughs> no, honestly, I didn't even like see it because you're yeah, like, oh, it's Well, yeah, I'm not at the right angle Why for you, you to see it. Why are you shaving back here, by the way? I don't know how it got there, dude. And know. by the way, it's not shaving cream. It's from that cock worship party on Wednesday we went to. There it is. That, I, I'm telling you, I'm a boring old dad. Nothing yes, happens to me. Nothing. I go to the cock worship party. <laughs> they come behind my ear right. and I just go podcast. I got nothing to talk about. But that's what makes you interesting. Some people go for the face, the chest. That's you right. go right behind like, you. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a hot lover. I'm like, oh, yeah. Give it to me, daddy. Yeah. Like, give it to me. I want it all over this this area of under my ear. Just yes. put it right here. Well, speaking of hot lover, yeah. you have a very hot lover. My wife? Yes. Yes. And she's hot. She's very hot. You guys have an amazing podcast called Endless Honeymoon. Yes. I love seeing all the clips yes. on social media. You got to come on that. I would love to, we please. Would love to have you. She kind of went viral. And yeah. that kind of went viral. Yeah. And I loved this moment. Natasha Legere, I don't know if, if you guys know, had to follow Burt Kreischer at the Hollywood Improv. And... She just took her top off. We well, got to contextualize it just in case people don't know. Bert performs with his top off. It's like his thing. It's his thing. He goes yeah. up on stage. He's like, "You guys want to see something crazy?" Yeah, hey. and he's a big burly. There he is. Yeah, yeah, he's a big burly man. <laughs> big bear. And, yeah, a bear. Huge a bear. girthy. I remember him from Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> he blasted right here. 
<laughs> this is that was Burt Blast not, right there. Not Burt Blast. It was Burt Blast. That sounds like the worst like '90s candy ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey kids, are you tired of being tired after school? Try a Burt Blast. Oh, it's burst in my mouth. <laughs> it's under my ear. <laughs> That's that's straight up an ad from Uncle Jeff right it there. It is, yeah. it is, it is. But she gets up on stage, and she took her top off in front of a sold-out room at the Improv, and TMZ picked it up. Like, yeah. there was... Vi I mean, so how cool. did you feel about that? I felt... Uh, horn horny? Horny. I guess is the word, yeah. No, I was... I thought it was so cool. Like, to be honest, like... I come from the Bay Area, and my mom's a fucking hippie. I was raised around naked hippies my entire life. There's nothing about nudity that, like, freaks me out. More yeah. than anything, I was like, you know, we're talking about, like, as you get older, things get more boring. The one... I think stand up actually when you you know it's 20 years how long are you you're probably about 20 years huh Oh no like 14 15 yeah it starts close. to be like you've done it so long and you still love the experience mm -hmm. but like it feels like okay I've done this before I've done that before and so I my main feeling of it was like oh Natasha's like finding some joy in performing again. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I, 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 <laughs> She's living. She is living. She's living, yes, yeah. yeah. And like, look at the comments. It's like, iconic, yeah, icon. Yeah. Queen, queen. Goat. Yeah. Yes, mama. Dude, I made a mistake of going to a party with her. Like, oh, the you next, made the mistake. Well, I, like the next day. Uh -huh. And I've never been more summarily. It was like all these women in comedy at this party. Oh, uh -huh. I've just, I've never been more overlooked in my life. Like nobody was interested in even looking at me. They were like, <laughs> queen, out of the way, nerd. Queen, icon, icon. Like they just, I icon could. Icon legend only. <laughs> Natasha Legendo. I, I was just trying to play off of legend and Legero. Legendo. Really work. Legendo. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, I, I loved it. I remember seeing it and being like, this yeah. bitch. Yes, it was this a this bitch, bitch moment, wasn't it? It was very this yeah. bitch. And I thought it was fantastic. And a lot of people, and I like, a lot of people are so up in arms with the whole like, free the nipple, you oh, know? Yeah. And I think that she just went up there and was like, that's I, also not, I got this too. Yeah, it's not so much her, her energy of, free, you know, the free the nipple mm -hmm. agitator. I don't see that, but I thought it, but it was, it was, a I thought a kind of iconic mm -hmm. Feminist moment, very much so. I guess so. I it was. I just thought it was kind of punk rock and cool. It's very punk rock like and cool, it. and I love that. I just feel like, you know, uh, I just always have felt like Natasha's more like a, you know, don't talk the talk if you can't walk the walk. And yeah. I think it was just like such a moment for her to be like. It was also funny because I'm. I was at home with our kid. Yeah. It, speaking of like, like the the the. When you're in a partnership, like the difference of what one person is experiencing and then the other, like she was telling me, oh, I just got off stage. I, I, can, I just took my shirt off in front of a sold out crowd. And I'm just like, well, the child's almost asleep. He, and there's warm milk a brewing on the stove. It was like, we're not having the same night. Like she's at war and you're yeah, like, yeah. will you be coming home this winter? Please, we're almost out of our can of beans. Oh, Father, we're hungry. <laughs> the, the candle's almost done. The, the, the ruble pot is empty. <laughs> well, let's, let's get into, I want to talk a little bit about your book real quick before we get into some stories because um, you talk about going to like Burning Man. Yeah. Love Burning Man. I do love Burning you Man. You are in a group of, of people who do Burning Man. Uh, Harlan Williams does Burning Man. Oh, does he really? Oh, he yeah. He feels like Burning Man. He's very like, Burning Man. I don't know that he, I didn't know that until you told me that, but it, like, that tracks totally. And Randy Sklar has gone to Burning Man. I do know that. I've yeah. seen, I've seen, I've seen Randy up there. Oh, I've, you've, uh, uh, in uh -huh. the wild, you yeah, see I've seen other? a wild Randy. That's cool. I've seen a wild Sklar out there. I've, I, I'm not really a big festival person. Yeah. Um, Unless there's like a like a couch or like a vent like a you know you want some something shade clean. like a bar like yeah something listen, like that. I'm not a person who's like everyone should go, mm -hmm. but what I will say is you saying you're not a big festival person. What defines Burning Man more than anything else mm -hmm. to me, and and it's gotten less like this. It there, there is this like creeping Coachellification of Burning Man that people do talk about, mm -hmm. but what defines it more than the, uh, anything else is it's a uh, difference from any other experience you will ever have. To me, saying I'm not really a big... I'm not saying you'd like Burning Man. I kind of get a vibe. You wouldn't. But really? I, I just feel like... I, but I, it smells. Any, it definitely smells. Yeah. It def, you're a clean, fastidious man. Thank you. And But, but Burning Man <laughs> is an outlier. It is its own thing. And Badlands, it, like yeah. Thunderdome. 
Well, it's one part Thunderdome, one part hippie festival, one part rave, one part sex party, one part drug party, one part what the fuck is this, one part culture jamming kind of psychedelic mind melting explosion. It's so many things that it's really difficult to describe it and i know when people do people are rolling their eyes i can feel i can feel your listeners rolling their eyes right now but but what i'm saying first of all no, I mean, they're go, not i believe me no I, you guys I, not, are rolling your eyes you, maybe your listeners are, are very special they are but what i know that it inspires a lot of like eye rolling player hate but it, w- i started going in 96 i yeah. was 16 years old and it used to be f- like fucking dangerous buildings were being set on fire there were drive by shooting ranges there was it was a, a fucking chaotic like the video of california love pretty much yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 exactly yeah but way wider yeah. um but uh but and these days it's way bigger yeah and way crazier but also way more sanitary it's like simultaneously more crazy in the scale like you'll see things like, okay there was one year i went that they had they built a uh, and th- they built a it was like this stagecoach mm-hmm. that rolled out uh, onto the playa they call it the desert and it's a stagecoach and this was like on Monday after the event it was like they wouldn't let this thing was so dangerous they wouldn't let it out during the real event so it was only for the people that like stuck around oh wow and we were all kind of gathered around and it was just like and it looked like a tank it was like a stagecoach but it had a tank turret or whatever like uh, like the gun the, the tube the, big, the yeah. tube and they they wheeled it out and they had like a a support staff that was pushing us all back is uh, there's everybody's like back 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 so we go back like 200 feet like literally 200 feet and they like start up this like engine and it's like Arr! and the turret shoots out a wall like a a spew of flame you you remember it was similar burnt to blast. It, was, yeah. it was a burnt blast yeah they, they shit's out burnt blast it was a burnt yeah. blast uh, a wall of flame that was a story high and it was so hot that all of us there was probably 500 <laughs> of us that were standing there thought thinking we were in a safe distance we all i remember the feeling screamed and started running away (laughs) and and it was so hot like you could feel your your hair melting off of you and then finally the burp blast calmed down and all the people kind of like you know burned walked back towards the stagecoach to realize that 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 line of flame had been powering a single blender at the back of the stagecoach that was making one blender's worth of margaritas. It was just like that whole thing. So that to me is what Burning Man is, is like <laughs> the biggest scale for the most random, why is this even happening type of shit. We got to blend the margaritas, guys. Yeah. Stand back. And it wasn't even like, it wasn't even like a big margarita. It was like a just <laughs> literally one blender. It was like you and I could have like split this A thing. ninja. Yes. <laughs> well, that's crazy. But there are showers. There, yes, there that's are, good. There are showers. And not only, I have an RV that I bought uh, that's like my my the, my primary love above my daughter and above my wife. Uh, so I have a shower. But if you were to go and you didn't bring a sh- Justin, I think that if you did go, you would bring a shower. But uh, yeah, if you didn't, I, mm-hmm. there is a place where you can go. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, Dr. Bronner's, the hippie soap. Oh, oh, the, like in the With jars. With all the yes, weird, yes, yes, like, yes, healthy yes, writing yes, yes, on this it. This one. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Bronner. Yes, yes, yes. So Dr. Bronner's- I know that one. The Dr. Bronner's people do a, a camp there every year. Okay. Um, and they they set up this big dome. It's uh, There's a lot of domes. And, and, and one of the coolest things to me about Burning Man is, like, if you're into it, there's a dome for it. What, are you, what do you like? I like a good, like, lounge vibe. Got a lounge. You like gay stuff? Sure. There's a whole, doesn't. There's a whole gay neighborhood. I would do that. Gay domes. Yeah. Uh, there, the, anything you're into. If there's jazz, there's jazz. You're yeah. a raver, there's a rave Drag. dome. Drag. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. For sure, anything yeah. you're there for, yeah. there, it's it's ready for you. So this <clears> is <throat> one of the domes way out uh, that the Dr. Bronner's people do. And I, we all owe Dr. Bronner's a, a huge debt of gratitude for sure. making bathing cool in the hippie community. He really did. Yeah. yeah. That was like a big thing that they did for us. Well, yeah. And it was like a good, and it's also cost effective because you can dilute it. That's right. And like save it up. So they set up this big dome and basically it's like a communal shower and mm. you have to wait in line. Great. You wait in line all day. Uh, like it takes a couple hours. Actually Fantastic. To get in because, so this is how it works. You wait in line, wait in line, then they let you in. And then when you get past the thing, you're encouraged to stay strip as naked as you're comfortable with. And most oh. people, I would say, strip completely. And then um, they start sort of pushing you oh, to, great. towards like this. Um, this sounds <clears throat> terrifying. Oh, it hasn't gotten terrifying yet. It's oh, go- not it's yet. About, it's about okay. to get worse. Okay, okay. So then ahead. they start pushing you towards, I am not kidding, like a, I would say, 
a box car? I would call it a box car. It's uh-huh. a box car. Like it, it's a it's a like the, the flatbed of a pickup truck, but there's like a a transparent plexiglass like box. Mm-hmm. It's a box car, and they start shoving these naked hippies into this box car uh, a, a, for their one shower of the week, and then all of a sudden, like no un, uniform. I mean, listen, they start spraying you down with peppermint peppermint foam. Okay, does it sound Holocausty? Yes. Yeah, it does sound it's a, a little bit. Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> it's Holocaust. It's peppermint Auschwitz. But to be honest, it was way more fun than the Holocaust. Okay, like, well, I don't good. know for sure, but I feel like almost definitely. Then they spray you down with water, and then all these like clean hippies um, come out of this box car, and then they start dancing to like psychedelic trance and scanning the room for their like hippie three way. It's kind of a beautiful. <laughs> it's we were calling it Natasha and I when we went to it. We were calling it the fun Holocaust. Yeah, I mean, my God. <laughs> Just like get in here. And so that's to me what's wash your parts. What's cool about mm-hmm. Burning Man to me, honestly, if I can be sincere, sure, is it's all of these kinds of experiences. It's it's the seed of Burning Man mm-hmm. was was there is value in doing shit that is weird that will rip you out of your banal existence just for the sake of having the experience. Like it doesn't. It's a very it's a very nineties to early two thousands vibe because now. Young people are all about like societal change and deeper systemic blah, blah, blah. This is like none of that matters. What matters is like jamming your experience. And comedy is kind of like that too yeah. in a way. Like you, you, when you say some sort of like perfect transgressive thing on stage and the whole audience like has this like cool, get it. temporary, cool, weird experience. To me, that it, it's that. It's like your perfect crowd work moment, but it's happening 10,000 times a second everywhere you turn at Burning Man. And I think that's what's really cool about it. it. It's interesting, too, that you said that because I saw a video like I, um, on social media, which I which I love. Because every now and then they'll take like, you know, this is what high school was like in the late 90s. This is what concerts. And they did one with concerts. Yeah. And they said, here's a concert before the screens took over. Yeah. And it was like that. It was like people talking and jamming out. And like now, and now it, it's just- that's... It terrifies me. I think that's yeah. part of the reason why I don't want to go because I just see like... Well, I think that that... Everyone to, with their phone up in the air. I think that that, if it has any vitality, the Burning Man experience, it's it's about the... It, it is that. It, and, and it started with those seeds, but it's gotten so much worse because of the internet, which is that like the world can feel <clears throat> really like you're on a conveyor belt of like boring, consumery hand delivered <clears throat> and the internet's day. made that so much <clears throat> crazier because yeah. like the in, like literally all of culture is in your pocket at all times and to more to the point what we were talking about earlier they're delivering you your interests yeah. like you show them you a little like bit this. you like this yes. this and, is what you like I know that's and so Burning Man is like a little bit like what if you had 10,000 experiences that ripped you out of what felt normal mm-hmm. uh, and maybe it will shift you when you return back to your boring ass life. Exactly. Maybe it'll shift you a little bit and make you into a different kind of person. And I feel like that's always been my mentality, especially like with pop culture, because I do love it. I remember yeah. like being obsessed with it as a kid, watching like, you know, reading Entertainment Weekly every day. And exactly that. I feel like pop culture now is being force fed. If you don't like this, this is what's wrong with you. This is what you like. This is what you, this is what you're supposed to like. Well, that's very much like a waterboarding of like, and if you don't like a certain thing, then. Well, that's what this book is about, actually. Good. The whole book is, and and, and in the end of the book, I kind of make that case, which is like people our age, Mm -hmm. when we were growing up, like your experiences were really about the accidental, like, thing that happened to you Mm -hmm. like you would fall in with one group and then all of a sudden your destiny would be kind of shifted in this weird way and then you you take a left like you your experiences i I don't even know you that well but like you're funny you're gay like those two things probably shifted you in these particular ways that kind of like set your destiny and now i'm not saying this doesn't happen at all but now if you're young like it's kind of one path. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, and music reflects it and pop culture reflects yeah. it. Like music is country, but with a techno beat and a hit and a <clears> rapper <throat> will come in. Everything's collaborated. Everything's Every, on yeah. top of itself. Yes. I call it, uh, I didn't come up with this. This poet, Mandy Kahn, came up with this con- this phrase, collage culture. Collage where, culture. Where everything's that. kind of collapsed onto itself. And there are really positive parts of that too. Of course, people, of course. People are less isolated. People are like finding things that they're into uh-huh. in an easier way. But there's some, 
melancholy I feel about like my daughter when I think about her growing up and how much of her experience will be curated by an algorithm that I I wrote this like for her to go, here are the worlds I walked through. Here are the accidental experiences yeah. that I had. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, I was friends with like, all the groups, the jocks, yeah. the cheerleaders, the nerds, the band kids, all that. I never was like in a clique because yeah. I didn't want to be in a clique. Yeah. I was just wanting to be friends with everybody. Yeah, that's cool. But it is interesting too. It's like, yeah, now you have like Beyonce dropping a country single and everyone's like, we don't know what to do. And there's something really cool about that. It's fucking rad. Like the, I think it's so awesome. The the the, uh, the the walls between cultures, they were, they had problems it was problematic and it would, but, but on, inside of the wall, it felt like you had been let in on a secret, yeah. right? Like there's a good thing that there's been a, some, some ladders built over the walls, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's a, I, there's a sadness whenever it's, something changes, there's a sadness that exists. So, oh wait, can I tell you the six worlds and then we can do your yeah, yeah, story? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we'll do the show. <laughs> so here are the six, here are the six universes that I discuss in yes. the book. And everybody's got their own universes, which I think is so cool. Like, even if these aren't the worlds that you operated in, like your world worlds were, were, were the thing that made you. So they are AA and the 12 steps. I got sober when I was 15, got out yeah. of rehab for the last time when I was 15 and got sober. Wow. Deafness and sign language interpreting. My parents are both deaf. My bro half brother, half sister, stepsister, cousins, aunts, uncles, everybody's deaf. And I spent 15 years as an interpreter. Uh, raves and the and the early 90s rave scene. I was a rave promoter, a rave DJ, and eventually an ecstasy, a clean and sober ecstasy dealer in the wow. San Francisco rave yeah. scene in the 90s. Burning Man, we have discussed. Discuss. Yes. Um, Hasidic Judaism in the world of the Jews. My dad, when my mom left, my dad became like a wild born again. He got that kush. He got that kush that Judaism. Good, good. Or that bad, bad, depending oh, yeah. on what your experience <laughs> was. But literally, I was a secular kid from Oakland, like no religious life at all. My dad won visitation rights to see me and I would fly back to New York and I'm not kidding, like cosplay as like Tevia the Milkman for six weeks a year. Like it was crazy. Uh, and so I like would dip into this like old world Yiddish speaking. Yeah. But everybody's deaf, but everybody in the neighborhood speaks Yiddish as a first language, and I don't even know Hebrew. And then wow. finally, of course, the world you and I share, the world the of stand-up comedy. And each of them is like a is a history. It's like a comedic history of the universe. And then it goes into like my entry into that universe and what I learned there and what I found there and what I did there. That's really cool. It's called Subculture Vulture. And Check it's available it out. Now. Yeah, seriously, I, I definitely want to read that. I'm sure I, I could probably relate to a lot of it. Well, I think Except that, for the like, you know, uh, Hasidic part. But I think that's the thing is like you had southern uh, southern baptist same thing, thing. whatever extreme, it is extreme we religion. all had yeah. this thing where you especially people our age where you were just like a pinball kind of like being slapped from experience yeah. to experience yeah. and then you get to a certain age and you look back and you go whoa i had no idea like i was on a path it didn't feel like a path it felt like i was just being slapped from world to world and now i'm i'm grown now that I'm grown, grown now that I've taken a few burnt blasts, yeah. I can look back and go, whoa, this was like a path. to Rode hard and left out to dry. <laughs> I've been through things. Kids. I had a crouton under my oh, ear. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Let's Just, talk pop culture. We shall. We mentioned Burning Man. You said Coachella. Yeah. Uh, here we have no doubt. They are doing, uh, they're performing together at Coachella. Mm -hmm. And this story came out like the end of last week that Gwen Stefani... Uh, has a song that every time she has to play it, she gets ill. Because she hates it so she much? She just hates it so much. So uh -huh. she said it was it was 24 years since No Doubt released the return of Saturn single Ex-Girlfriend. That was the song. Uh, but it still brings up emotions for Gwen. She says, I can't listen to a lot of the songs because they speak so clearly to me. Um, she says, and it's like you have regret and mistakes you've made. Most of the songs are about that. If I do Ex-Girlfriend, even when I say it, I almost throw up in my mouth because it's like, oh my God, it just brings you right back. Could I proffer... A suggestion to society. Yeah, this is the Gwen's right platform. Gwen's listening. Gwen loves this Gwen podcast. Gwen and society at large. Can we go ahead and drop the phrase "throw up in my mouth"? Yeah, we're on year twenty-five of mm -hmm. "throw up in my mouth" a little bit, and I yeah. think it might be time to retire it. Yeah. I, I, thank you very I think much. We've yeah. Officially, I think it's over, guys. I think it is over because, like, ew, I I threw up. Oh in my, my god! Mouth I, a I just uh, uh, yeah. and oh, another one. I I'm. This is more contemporary, but I'm ready to let go of it. Can we stop with wait what? Why does What's everybody wait, say what? wait? Every TV show you've ever seen, it goes. Someone goes wait what? No, oh. one, that just happened. <laughs> I was like, you watch wait a, what? My thing, my my biggest pet peeve. 
a period piece where they say, wait, what? I've seen it. What period? They're, in like, Gilded they're in like Victorian puffy shoulder uh, dress. They go, wait, what? They say, no, <laughs> no one said that. Christine Baranski <laughs> just like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? The Russells are throwing uh, a ball. Yeah, it's Attila the Hun. Wait, uh, what? Uh, like, no, yeah. nobody. They just, Hollywood decided people say this mm-hmm. and it got in so many scripts that now everybody says it. I'm done with wait, what? I'm done with throw up in my mouth a little bit. Interwebs can go. We got to stop. We have to get limits at a certain Bromance. point. Romance. We talked Bro- about bromance. Get out of here with we bromance. Talked about bromance. Can we, we not man up. cave? Can we stop a, a man cave? Did no more man cave. It's it's, it's a room. It's, it's uh, archaic at this point. Yeah, just right. like the, the term. But um, is there a song? I actually liked ex girlfriend. I didn't have a problem with okay. ex girlfriend. How's it go? I was doing up your ex girlfriend. Whoa! It was like okay. Yeah, I don't. I remember like don't sleep. That was close. Speak. Yeah, sp- uh, don't speak. <laughs> don't sleep is what you did in the padded cell. <laughs> because you'd have another and day at in the man. padded cell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and at Burning Man. And you at your church. Sleep. And, and at this cl- at the, cl- the new Christ-centered club when you snort a line of communion away from don't You don't sleep. sleep. Yeah. <laughs> we love God. Don't um, sleep. I know my teeth are yeah. grinding. But is there a song that you, every time you hear, you don't throw up in your mouth. You just do what a normal person does. You just change the channel and go, nope. Oh, I mean, yeah, there's so many. So, like, I can't, I can't really. I took so much acid when I was a kid that, like. I did not. I had have you done Teddy Grahams. At all? No. Never in your life? No. Mushrooms? I've done mushrooms, yeah. It's the same thing. It's, yeah. That's a controversial position, but I, I it's Yo, the same thing. You did acid as a kid. I watched Power Rangers and ate Teddy Grahams. <laughs> They're very similar psychedelic experiences. <laughs> yeah. I would say that Jimi Hendrix, I love Jimi Hendrix. I mean, I really think he's great. I can't listen to it anymore. It's it's just so like of a time it just, I, that I just can't, it doesn't, It I can't be brought back. Um, but you're talking more about a specific song that makes my skin crawl. Well, like mine, for instance, is actually a Gwen Stefani song. Yeah. When I hear Hollaback Girl, I'm like, Ugh. And I'm That's sure. Uh, uh, well, because it's that part of time in pop culture music when I think early 2000s music, we're going Fergie, we're going Gwen Stefani. Yeah. They taught Generation Z how to spell. Yeah. Bananas. Yas. I, Fergalicious. I should say Yas. Yas. Yeah. Yas can go as well. Yeah, it can definitely go. White Yas. White Yas needs yas. to go. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, for me right now, because I'm a parent, like my hellscape shark, is actually baby my, shark. <laughs> it, it, I'm past baby shark, and baby shark had functionality because it 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 was like an opiate uh-huh. for children. <laughs> you know, like your child would be freaking out. You go, what about what about baby shark? Could we could we yes on? yeah no, no. yes daddy. but but. Um, well, first of all, she found out about um, um, Gangnam Style. No. And, and like, I had to change the name of Alexa to Ziggy. Like, do you know you can do that? No. You can change her name to keep your children from being able to say, like, because they know Alexa. Alexa. Wow. So then you go into the settings and it's Ziggy. But then she figured that out and it'd just be Ziggy, play Whoopum Gangnam Style. And I had to sit my daughter down and say, we don't fucking play Gangnam style, style in this house. We yeah. don't do that. What kind of a house do you think we're running here? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. think there's a fucking Gangnam yeah. style house? No. <laughs> but there's a new thing that ki- there's a, there, you'll never know this, or maybe you will. Do you want kids? No. Okay. So you'll never know this. There is a sub, like a sub hell chamber uh, of music called Kids Bop. Oh, I know Kids Bop. And it's, it's songs that you m- might have heard. Mm-hmm. And it's an exact studio replication with a worse singer. Yeah. So it's Thriller, but by some guy they found on the we- on the Sunset Strip. Yeah. Who's like, why? Why not play actual Thriller? And they'll do pop songs, but change them for children. It's the worst. So they did, they did WAP? They did not. They did WAP. Can we what look a- that up? But it's called Wings and Pizza. Okay, WAP. Okay. Wings and Pizza, guys. This is... Has to be fake. No. I think this is a satire. I don't think it is. Wings and Wings pizza. Wings and pizza. Oh my god! And then they did Padam Padam with Kylie Minogue, and it was like about like taking a guy home to the club and pretty much having sex with them. And they're like, "We want to dance all night." Padam. You know, it's you like, know where they don't play Wings and Pizza? 
at what? LA's premier Christ-centered dance club because they know that the devil's in the details. The devil is in the details. That is so crazy that they couldn't just write a different song for kids. So or like, ignore that one completely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, we don't need the wet ass pussy remix. <laughs> we can just go to a different zone of music. Uh, I got it. Wings and pizza. Kids love that. <laughs> God. Um, here's something that I thought was very interesting. Here's an article about a landlord, or landlords, rather, are now enforcing a no-sex tenancy clause now if you want to rent uh, an apartment. So this is actually, I think, in London. It's not L.A., but... Um, this is, uh, someone's looking for a flatmate. You have to be careful because your landlord won't let you have sex. Uh, this is what happened to Lucy, who, like everyone else in this piece, is using a pseudonym for privacy reasons. She moved into a shared house with three other girls. She started to notice signs in the communal areas banning, quote, music after 11 p.m., house parties, and crucially, loud sex. All right, can I just jump in? Yeah. This is a false, this is fake news. It is? Well, look, it says loud sex. They didn't say anything about, like, bad, quiet, So it's a clickbait. Sex. Well, who's having, like... As long as you are frigid... Do you think frigid, 23 year as as long as, as, Listen, as long as you are frigid, uh -huh. and if you're in London, odds are high. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not thinking they're... They're not screaming for the rooftops, right? Oh, another to Who sticky is? toffee. Who is? Who's the loud... That's a great question. Who are the loudest fuckers? Yeah. I'm going to go Australian, probably. That seems right, you know? Yeah. That kind of a thing. They're kind of like a little bit drinky. I don't know, but then I see like the cast of like Love Island in the UK. You're they're right. like, all right. They, they do. You, know? you got banta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They sound Chow like, it. Chew yeah. it. Yeah. Give, give me a bit of a lick. Just Some like, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, give like me that. a bit of a lick. Bit like, of a lick. Right, put your leg behind your yeah, head, yeah, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and go ahead, slam it into my wings and pizza. Yeah, my wings and pizza. Yeah. Yeah, babes, yeah, babes, yeah. Give me, give me the wings babes. and pizza. Yeah, cook the wings and pizza. Babes, put some gravy on it. Who put is that the blast behind my ear? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, that is such a great question. Who, if we have to go with stereotypes, would be the loudest sexers? Yeah, America's got to be up there. I don't think they are. Greatest pussy on earth? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was just a question. Is it? Mm, gosh, is it? I'm not. I don't, I'm not an expert. I, but this is so interesting. Loudest. I mean, I guess the stereotype would be like Latin. You know, I, I feel. Can we just? Can I? Can I leave? <laughs> can I take off? I would say. I don't know why I set up this racial breakdown of <laughs> how noisy people are, and then I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. No. I think. I. I think it is interesting because I want to know like what happens because. Um, if you are allowed, what happens to you? Like, do you get a knock on the door? Right. Is there like a, a an envelope under the we, under the door? We discussed we this. We heard that there was some loud. This is in this is in the clause. Yes. Um, disturbingly, some tenants have found no sex clauses actually written into their agreements. Sometimes it's expressed overtly, at other times disguised as a ban on overnight guests. Now, this is nice if you're just like kind of a like a fuck boy. Yeah. You're like, no problem on the overnight guests. They weren't going to spend the night anyway. anyway. I burp blast and then it's time to go. Yeah, I guess that how it works. I mean, I'm wondering how that does work because it's like you bring someone over and you're like, all right, get out of here. And they're like, we heard there was a ruckus last night. Nope, wasn't me. I mean, this is a type of shit that makes people say landlords are evil. You know, I mean, one of the base, the basic needs of the human being you can't do in your home. What do you, why do people have a home if not to have sex? <laughs> That's the primary reason to have a home. But I love that they're now like, uh, this guy, Chris, it's like he immediately looked up his tenancy agreement straight away, assuming he'd be able to argue his way out of it. But it turned out that it was there all along. So they actually banned overnight guests. So I get that. That's fine. No, it's not. You can't have a friend spend the night. You can't date. You cannot be an adult having a friend spend the night. You're dating. You're in the world and you go, you meet someone you like and you can't bring them home to sleep Fair. over. And then you have to be like, shh. That's so <laughs> insane. But I guess it's kind of old school London too because I kind of think of it like an old lady with like a, a candle to light the hallway that's I'm like, trying to watch me feel. Oh, is there someone up there? Is there a spirit? A, yeah, I, I feel like <laughs> we talked about this. No tenancy. With the broom? Yeah, that's right. The cats right. are trying to sleep. I'll put you out in the street straight away. <laughs> that feels right to yeah, me, actually. Yeah. The best pies in London. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of I a thing. I can't go to sleep with all this racket on the cobblestones. Yeah, I had a, 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 when I first moved to LA, I had this old couple live next door and they were, 
I mean, I felt bad, like, because I moved to Silver Lake, obviously, look at me. <laughs> and they were from the, old, from the old neighborhood. They were from Silver Lake, but they'd been Old there, school Silver Lake. They'd been there for like 30 years. And they, I'm, and they go, could you keep it down after seven? Wow. And I was, they were old. Yeah. But they were living in like the, the hippest neighborhood in LA. And I just said, no. no, like, no, I'm sorry that this neighborhood has gentrified and I'm sorry I've added to it, but I cannot. I think you should move to Reseda. Like, I can't yeah. keep it down past seven. Yeah, that's seven? seven. When is dinner for them? Five? I know. Uh, it's a drag being old. God, I don't ever want... Like, meanwhile, I was like, I went to bed at 10 last night. <laughs> I did it. Um, speaking of did it, Ricky Martin has recently talked about having a foot fetish and how he meets guys um, in this GQ article Ricky Martin was kind of in a little bit of hot water a year or two ago I when remember. his like, nephew came out and yeah. like made all these awful allegations against him and they turned out to be incorrect. Oh, they, they were false. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't read that. Isn't that Thank funny God. how society works? Yeah. Because I just read that article and go, oh, he fucks his nephew. I and know. I never re-examined the... I'd, like, you're already ruined. I go, Ricky Martin, he no. banged he bang one specific person. Well, it wasn't his nephew. He he did get divorced from his husband uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Uh uh, I think it's Juan Yosef. Uh, he was also incredibly good looking. Yeah. But no, the uh, the rumors were squashed about the nephew. The nephew was clearly unwell and trying to like embezzle money. I and see. Thank God it got shut down because I was like, good Lord. Poor Ricky. Not Ricky Martin. That's my Ek and Sue if you're watching The Traders. Like, oh, sweet baby Jesus. Not Ricky Martin. Do you love him or he's just so hot or what I is just it? Ricky Martin was you like- you a fan of, of his music or- No, like I remember when Live in La Vida Loca came out and I was like- Sure. Burr. Like it was like that time of my life. It was an I'm, awakening moment. Yeah, for Interesting. sure. Interesting. And then- You know, we um, do this, oh, that pot, the Endless Honeymoon podcast. Um, uh -huh. And we have had, we have like a secrets hotline where people call in and leave their deep yeah, yeah, secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not joking. 10 women have called in and said that Jim Carrey in The Mask and Ace Ventura was their sexual awakening. Weird. It was. So, it's so many that it is clearly a thing yeah. in society. We tried to get Jim to come on to the podcast to discuss it. Strangely, he was not interested. That's but, so bizarre. Um, but it was so weird. It was, yeah. One person did it, and then it was like a flood. All these women were like, oh, my God, I felt so seen when that person called in. I, too. So when he was said, somebody on. stop me. So you're Rick, Ricky Martin is your Jim Carrey. Well, Jim Carrey's my Jim Carrey, sure, for sure. Sure, sure. But Ricky Martin was like the, like you see someone, you're like, oh my God, just the chiseled features, yeah. you know, like the dance moves. And I remember seeing him at the Grammys. And yeah, so he now is addressing rumors that he has a foot fetish and revealed how he is meeting guys. Um, some people are asking, are we going to see him on Grindr? He also opened up about his sexuality. Wait, which, Ricky Martin's on Grindr? Probably. That's pretty, that's a kind of a good pickup. I think he would be. Grinder? Yeah. yeah, I guess everybody's horny, even famous yeah. people. They don't yeah. have like um like Raya should, for gr sluts. Gr gr Raya. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like gay Raya. They should do that. You know what I have? I had an idea for Raya, by the way. Graya? It should be gay gay Raya. We should start that. Graya, yeah. Raya. And then I want to do um, you know how Raya used to be um like famous people, yeah. But then there's not enough famous people to make that a viable business plan. So it had to expand out to like a photographer or yeah. like a, the, a, the DJ at the Roosevelt. A documentarian. And, but then now the real famous people are like, well, we can't be on Raya because like it's just so many random people. I want to make Raya go back again to Raya for famous people, but it's it's Raya Prime. Ooh. So for celebrities, celebrities Raya only, Prime. they they pay, you know, a premium, let's say $1,000 a month, Raya Prime, A-lister, no, B-listers and above only. I tried to get on Raya and I was denied four times. I was on a waiting list for like four years. I had Dulce Sloan, I had Whitney Cummings, I had all these people trying to hook me up and with they their said like, no. and they were like, we're still reviewing your account. What, four years. What a humiliation. It was awful. It's was like, like when well, you get on Cameo and you set your price at a certain uh, level and then you realize you're really a $25 a video you. guy. That's yeah. what Raya's doing to everyone in LA. Exactly. And then I'd and then i look over at this this guy next to me. He's like, yeah, I'm on Raya. I'm like, you're on Raya? You're a fuck, you're a fuck How am I not on Raya? You're like, who the fuck are you? He's like, I'm the guy that wrote Wings and Pizza. Yeah. I'm a huge oh singer-songwriter. Of course you're here. <laughs> um, I'm so glad that I did not make it to Raya, that I got out of the dating pool. You really did. Because I would have been on there desperately getting rejected or desperately not getting written back by Natasha Beckinsdale or whoever it was that I hit up. <laughs> Natasha Beckinsale? Is that a person? No, that's a mixture of your wife and Kate Beckinsale. No, who's, there's a Natasha B. Natasha, 
But, Betting field? Yeah, her. The rest is still unwritten? I don't know what I was Feel thinking. Feel the rain on your skin. Yeah, her. her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would have been right. Hey, what's up? Natasha I'm a big fan. Natasha Beckinsale. Yeah. Sounds like hey, hey. your wife's arch nemesis. <laughs> 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 Not Natasha Beckinsale. Um, so, yes, he's saying that he is now a foot fetish, um, which my producer Land and I were discussing. We were like... He's always been shoeless in all of his mm -hmm. pictures. Mm -hmm. Ricky's always like with his feet in a right. comfortable, oversized linen pant. And that is true. We're not shocked by this. Are you? It was there the whole time. Oh, right. It's like Kaiser Sose, but it's just, but it's feet. He's like, I'm into feet. And you're like, hmm. are you into feet? No. I've never understood it. It's no. like, what is it about a foot? I don't get it. And it's weird, like heterosexual foot fetishes, any sort of foot fetish. I don't understand, like, the concept of men, straight men, spending money for to feet. look at a woman's foot. But at the same time, girls, get your cash. Go for it. But and like, guys, get your nut. Yeah. Get your blast. I just don't get it. It doesn't, it's, it's the, it's not just not, it's not disgusting to me. It's just, it's a foot. It's weird. It's like having an ear fetish. Oh, you have that. Sorry, I didn't mean, I'm not I'm just still picturing that Burt Blast behind your ear. <laughs> um, but it does make me laugh because, like, my boyfriend's foot, he's got <laughs> a hammer pinky toe. Oh, he's got a nasty foot. Not a nasty foot. It's got a grip. That is so hilarious. So it's like, like, I joke that he can grip me and then, like, flip me over onto the coffee table. It's, I've, a, it's seen a good grip. These, I've seen those videos. It's a yeah. good grip. Good That's grip. Good pinky grip on his yeah, toe. But I don't understand the whole, like, do you look have, at those feet. Ugh. Do you have a thing? No. No, Do you? nothing. No, uh, nothing that I would admit to on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, um, you don't want to no, share here. I mean, I have, I have um, things that I search for. Sure. When I, when I search, I search. Yeah. What's your? I'm not gonna tell you on a yeah, podcast. Okay, great. All right, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I get it. But it's definitely not like feet or like. Well, to feet me, is too like pilgrim well, for to, me. To me, look at that ankle. Oh, real, real you know? fetish to me means if it's not there, you're not satisfied. That's mm -hmm. when it becomes crippling, right? Yeah. Kink is like, I'm into that. Fetish is like, I'm into nothing else. And yeah. that's when it becomes an issue because you got to find somebody that's down to do it too. Yeah. And that's hard. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I like baked beans. That's what does it for me. Like a woman in a tub of baked beans, eating them and then shitting the beans back into the tub, right? Think, and then yeah. eating the shit beans and then shitting. And then it becomes pure shit. And right. like, eventually she gets sepsis. That's right. my thing. Right. But call but, you old fashioned. Yeah but, yeah, but I can do other things right. too. You know what I mean? Dream big. Well, yeah. this family, this next story, yeah. they were so um, anti-LGBTQ <laughs> and the ideology that they packed up their bags and said, we're done with this country. And where do they move to? Russia. And they were immediately disappointed with the reality of oh, Russia. Oh my God. Have you heard this story? No, this is amazing. <laughs> so a conservative family decided to relocate to Russia to escape LGBTQ ideology and, uh, Found out the hard way. The Canadian farmer and his wife had their bank accounts frozen and complained about lack of English now in Russia. Now that is perfect. Because mm -hmm. it's the demographic of angry you're not speaking English and angry there's too much gay shit going on is it's one it's one circle. So the, I love to get to Russia and be like, what's with all the fucking Russian? Yeah. Hey. This is Russia. You need to speak English. <laughs> what? <laughs> borshke, borshke? You said this is this is Russia. You need to speak English. Uh, and also, this caught the attention of the Kremlin. The Kremlin <laughs> who, found out about them? <laughs> who did not take kindly to their insults. Uh, um, so this is the husband and wife, which oh, man. I'm going to say it. Gay. Yo, you, wait, the guy? Absolutely. Let's... If you have that much hatred Be for, L I'm sorry, LGBT ideology. No, that's good, too, because you're like, you're like, I know what I'll do. I'll go to the place where there are no gays to where tempt they me. Kill then you for get, living. Then you get there and you go, uh-oh, oh, I brought me. I brought me. I'm the problem. He's still gay. He's still me gay. Me still gay. Me still gay. <laughs> so after the family sold their farm, the profits were deemed suspicious and the couple had their bank accounts frozen. That is so The funny. wife took her complaints public about life in Russia in a since-deleted YouTube video posted on their account. Uh, Countryside Acres, the farmer's wife, moaned uh -uh, about not being able to speak Russian and how she was very disappointed in the country what at this point. 
did they think was going to happen in Russia? It's Russia. And I'm like surprised they're Canadian. Yeah, no, the Canadians are going, they're going hard. Uh, the Canadians got a whole, they have a whole thing. I think it's like, they, I think it's almost a rejection of the stereotype about Canadians. That they're nice and friendly they people. They go harder because of that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like they were like, we're not, you're, we're not your dad's Canadian. Yeah. We're racist, okay? We're going to do it. We can be like you guys. <laughs> yeah. God. That is such a funny rubber meets is, the road. Isn't that funny? It's like this family is just like, we got to get out of here. Yes. And then let's go to Russia and have stone soup. I don't support their hatred, mm -hmm. but I would binge watch the reality show. Thank I, you. I would love it. I would. Yeah. And you know who else would watch it? Who? The gay community. Absolutely. The LGBTQ Absolutely. community. What would it be called? The, what would the, it would be, it would be um, Kremlin. Um, uh, uh, Kremlin queer. Um, Kremlin core. Um, Kremlin core. Uh, Red scare. We got to get out of queer. Yeah, yeah. let's That's get out of queer. We got to get out of queer. queer. Yeah, be, be behind the cum curtain. Mm -hmm. um, that was taken. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because this rat reality show is this one. Okay. This story, Joe Exotic, Tiger King. He's back in the news. Speaking of gay men that need an escape. I know. Thank you. He is still in prison, and he finally, finally shoots his shot with Machine Gun Kelly with promises of tigers and wait for it, meth. Uh-huh. Because uh, I don't know if you guys... Tiger King, you feel like it did meth? That's like a weird... That's hard for me to <laughs> get my brain How around. How is that weird? He just didn't seem like the type. Right. He had really he good teeth. And... Listen, Florida mm -hmm. zoo owner Mullet, mm -hmm. okay, lives in a trailer. To me, that doesn't say meth. You right. Know? To me, that says... That's like poet. That's jazz. That's jazz. That's he like seemed a, like a jazz guy. Like a cabaret. Yeah. Like a lounge. Like a like a Russian I I expatriate, mm. kind of Russian mm -hmm. new immigrant mm -hmm. kind of energy. <laughs> so w he shot his shot at MGK for what? So, romance? Well, well, yeah. So MGK just got a full-on blackout tattoo all over his torso. Oh, he's like, I'm finally black. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. You can't tell me I'm not black. Look. Look, look what I did. It kind of looks good. I will the say. The guy looks He had good. like a hamburger tattoo and like right, it was sure. like, and then he finally kind of went all black. Like he had the piecemeal, hipster piecemeal. And yeah. now it's, we're into the like tribal techno pagan kind of full on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The problem so, with that is once you go black, there re it, you really can't go back. Because it is permanent. Once you go black out tattoo, you can't go back but to it, hamburgers. I'm not going to say it, it. It doesn't look bad. I think it's. Can it, I see it? it? kind of looks awesome if we have a picture of it let's see it's kind of cool yeah no it's kind of sexy i, I don't get know it. how i would react if i saw it in the daylight but this is a well done shot yeah sure you know Got it. it's fine i like it. and and joe exotic was like oh, oh. so he lost it he's he, pumping his python in prison right now yeah yeah exactly he's 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 got the tiger by the tail. Masturbator that yeah. gator. Yeah, yeah just, <laughs> <That's> just, <right. laughs> just doing it. But good for him, you know. I, I got I, the kangaroo by the pouch, you yeah, know what I mean? The, here's what I, like, the big show right now is Love is Blind Season 6. Yeah, I don't know in, if you, if, uh, yeah I'm in. Have you seen it? You, I, I've you seen, I'm not caught up. I'm halfway through. Mm -hmm. So I would pr prefer no spoilers. No, but, for but the sake of podcasting. you have seen Chelsea, right? Oh, I, you mean Megan Fox? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who is married? I heard, right. I what? She's married to Machine Gun Kelly. Oh, I thought you meant this Chelsea was, is married, oh, no, no, and no, that no. would be a, a big spoiler, and no. I would <laughs> attack you. I would come across the table and beat no, you. No, up. no, no, no. I haven't even gotten to that point yet. Yeah. But it's like it is funny because she did say in the pod. I which remember. Kind of gave me a Tiger King who is in a different sort of pod. Yeah. You know, like a oh, love is blind. And she's yeah. like, you know, I get told I look like Megan Fox a lot. That and was, the guy was like, I remember he yes! busted. He blasted hard. <laughs> he was so horny for it. I mean, it's such a funny thing to say. I mean, you know, it's not. They don't say you look like Megan Fox and are equally attractive. No. They say you, you have a, you bear a resemblance. a resemblance. But I don't see it. I mean, I see it if what? I had... If I had to compare her to a celebrity, I'm, squinting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm squinting to see if I can see the res. I can't. I mean, who, what celebrity do you think she looks like? Khloe Kardashian season one. That would be so fun if she said, I do sometimes get Khloe Kardashian season one. And the guy's like, <laughs> no, get me out of this hell box. Please. Uh, <laughs> Did he just snap his own neck in Dude, the pod? I would, that would be the greatest moment of t reality TV ever. Um, by the way, my other favorite thing is the guy 
who the girl says, I have a 10 year old. Yes. And you can see oh. his brain going, how fine, uh, how fine are you? How yeah. fine? And she is really hot. She's gorgeous. And yeah. You just know if he knew a little bit of how hot she was, then it he would be like, you know what? I think I am ready to be a yeah. stepdad, but it's this like shallow little instinct in him. Just like, I just wish I could know a little bit of how bad you are. Yeah. Scale of one to 10. And, and if it's a 10, then I'll raise your 10 year old. But well, that too. But then also she mentions that her and her ex-husband are still, uh -huh. they co-parent. Homies. So he's like, ah. Yeah. But then it was, world. there was the other one. There was another one where that same episode where she was married she it was, she, no, 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 it was no, Megan she, Fox. Megan Fox was divorced. She was divorced. That's yes, right. Yes, yes, Chelsea that's Fox. What it was. Yes, Chelsea Fox had been divorced. Chelsea Fox. Well, here's the thing that's really amusing is now Chelsea has gone on social media to apologize to who? To Megan Fox? <laughs> what? For what? <laughs> She, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> she regrets making that comment and she's gone as far as to reaching out to Megan Fox herself. Megan. To apologize. Megan, I want to tell you, when I said I look like you, that was so disrespectful I know. to your true beauty. Yes. There's nothing about me that's Fox-like. Uh -oh. And I want, you know what they told me I looked like? What? <laughs> the fantastic Mr. Fox. Oh, that's more I can my see energy. that. Yeah. I get... Um, Who do you get? Patrick Swayze. Oh, I totally see that. Or I get yeah. Martha Plimpton, which is fine. I see that too. Mm -hmm. I get um, Benji Maddox from the mm -hmm. band Good Charlotte. No. Yeah, one of them. One of them. That's yeah. what you would say to someone in the pod. <laughs> and they would you go, don't, yeah! yes! Wait, is he hot like that? Yeah, thank well, you. He's like Appreciate tattooed and everything. But no. uh, Chelsea does say that she did reach out to Megan Fox. And I was I'm like, sorry I did this to you? I'm so sorry I did this to did you. Did what? Megan's like, oh, I'm famous and hot. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm yeah. so sorry I did this to you. I'm getting pumped full of black ink from MGK's new tattoo. It's fine. <laughs> It didn't even heal yet. Our sheets are ruined. <laughs> that is a crazy... It is stupid. You I know think what this is? says like, oh, honey, you should have just stayed quiet. Yes. There's so much of that in the world. I'm so sorry there? I said I looked like you. I oh, don't. I'm hideous. I, I belong I'm in a, a bell tower. I'm a bugger wolf. Yeah. yeah I, I should never have. I should. That is yeah. really wild. But you know what? I don't even believe it. I think she reached out because she wanted Megan Fox to say hi to her. I mean, all these people, you got to understand, they're also on a reality show. Yeah. They're also, they're triangulating some like soap deal. Five years from now, they're like, "Hi, a Dr. I'm Bronner Chelsea. Soap. <laughs> yeah, I'm Chelsea for Dr. Bronner's soap. Dr. If you Bronner's like the Holocaust and raving, this is the soap for you." <laughs> By the way, I never will talk shit about Dr. Bronner's. I I love that company. They're an ethical company. They make amazing products. I love Dr. Bronner's. They do good work in the world. Do you want to know what's cool about Dr. Bronner's? Yeah, please. This is the way all companies should be. Yeah, they have a rule in their charter that the CEO can never make more than, I think, like 10 times more than their lowest paid worker. Oh, so wow. when the CEO gets a bonus, everybody goes with them. Undercover boss. It should That's be a little some... bit more like that. Yeah, A I little agree. more of that and yeah. a little less no sex clauses. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And well so, done. Dr. Bronner, I want to say I'm so sorry for even bringing you up on the podcast. Oh. I'm hideous. I'm no, disgusting. No, it's fine. No, we all need to get clean. We no. all need to get clean. I did reach out to Dr. Bronner and I told him I'm so sorry that I ever said anything. I'm just a piece of shit. I'm a dirty fucking rat. I'm a rat. That's what I should have said. I look like Megan Rat. I'm a fucking dirty, filthy, plague-ridden rat. I'm a this disgusting pigo. You're a bubonic babe. Stop it. <laughs> you stop. stop you're it. beautiful. You're beautiful and you're heroic and your courage for even being here shines. Queen, <laughs> you took your shirt off at the improv. Queen. <laughs> yes. Speaking of Queen, here we have Billy D. Williams. <laughs> yeah. Billy D. Thank you. That was a good that segue. That was good, a good segue. But wait, is do we feel is that a thing? I feel like the rumors of what celebrity is gay is like every single person yeah. that I can't keep track anymore. It's just, it's exhausting. And Billy D has done something great this, uh, this time around. He has embraced the gay rumors and he says, you know what? I've been called a closet queen, but I don't pay attention to any of that. 
And I'll tell you why. I just moved to Moscow. <laughs> Smooth Colt 45. Billy D. Williams moved to the <laughs> Red Square. There's uh, no Colt 45 in Red Square. Yeah. Um, but it's so funny because he's had a seven decade long career and uh, he has stories about many of the famous people he met along the way, such as Marlon Brando, James Baldwin, Lawrence Olivier, and Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury, huge Les. Oh, yes? No. But you but thought horn, very horny. Yeah. You know yeah. about have you seen the, the bathtub videos with Angela Lansbury? Is oh. she with the beans? With the pork and beans? In oh, the am top? I introducing you to these videos? I'm about to change your life. There are these videos okay. online uh, on YouTube of Angela Lansbury talking about masturbation. Work. Uh and it is like, I mean, you'll you'll she's in a tub. She's in a tub with soap over her naked body, and she's like talking about self-pleasure. It's murder she wrote, murder she flicked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I've never seen Lee Google so fast. <laughs> Angela Lansbury he masturbation. I literally think. was just like, oh my God. There we go. I'm I sold. told him Angela Lansbury to masturbation each, in a tub. To each person's kink is their own, you know? Oh, yeah. It used to be thought that women lose interest in sex after menopause. But now we know that just isn't true. Obviously, both you and your partner are different than you were 30 years ago. But if you can accept the inevitable physical and other changes, you can keep romance in your life. Oh. I believe it's important for a woman to try and maintain a certain sense of <laughs> mystery about herself. And I think that can continue to any age. <laughs> it's so easy to give up or to get lazy. It's worth it to continue to present yourself as a woman of loveliness and dignity. Absolutely. Thanks. Work. But she's not like, she's not flicking the right. bean. She's yeah, just talking but, about being sexual after come menopause. On, but it's fun and it funny. Is fun. Oh, I and felt also, like I was in a Discovery Channel store for a second. Also, it was amazing. How crazy is it the difference between men and women's sexuality? She's like, you might want to try oils or a soft towel to get you in the mood. A six-year-old man is just like, you might want to just squirt some lotion into your hand and turn on the computer. Yeah, lay down in front of a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just, easy. Uh, I, Velvet does it mm -hmm. for you. So a sandwich might make you want to. But I here's the thing with Billy D. Williams. If we remember Billy D. Williams, Billy D. Williams was a very, he still is. I, I remember seeing Billy D. Williams in person. Um, but he... Very handsome man. He was like Blackburn oh, yeah. Reynolds. Oh yeah, he was. He was hot. Look at him. But it makes sense that he was gay because what? What was he the mayor of? Cloud City. Does that sound like a straight town Wait, to Cloud you? Cloud City in Star Wars. Yeah. Does yeah. that sound like a like? Does that straight? Does that scream Red Square to you? Cloud City. Do you think those Canadians would have moved to Cloud City? No, Cloud City. You know what comes out of like clouds? Care Bears. Well, you know what else? Rainbows. Rainbows. Oh, no. I, I can't no. even look at a rainbow. No. You know what's cool is Russia just outlawed them. Thank you. The Finally. no rainbows. God. Yeah. Not my... Hashtag not my rainbow. It's just a red streak. Hashtag not my Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> God. Not my Noah. Wasn't that like the peace offering after the flood? And they're yeah. like, oh, the gays are taking... I'm like, um, he released a dove. Yeah. Actually, somebody gave me a peace offering after a flood, and it got left right under my ear, and your producer had to scrub <laughs> it off. If you know what I'm saying. Well, well, from one Billy to another Billy, we had the SAG Awards over the obsessed, weekend. Obsessed. I love her. Who, Billie Eilish? Yeah, I do. Why? Okay, here's why. Go for I it. I got a whole theory on Billie Eilish. Go because for I'm it. in the fucking throes of like nightmarish, brain-dead child music. So I'm listening to all these people, and they're all so whack. Mm -hmm. And then on comes Billie Eilish, and I go... This person is an artist. Yeah. Like, if Billie Eilish were... Her problem is she's too famous. If yeah. she was less famous, she would be thought of as, like, Kate Bush. She sh the way like she's, a Fiona Apple. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't even... I actually don't understand how she's this pop icon yeah. for these tweens. I don't think she's pop at all. No. Or she's me, mood. She's... She is mood. She's mood. And she's like, she's opening a vegan restaurant. And she's queer and she's, like, androgynous but hot. Like, yeah. I actually think of all the, like, Bubblegum pop. She's just not bubblegum pop. She's so, not bubblegum pop. But she's pop. in that zone of people. I know. She's the one. I know. She's She should be like Bjork. Yes. Agreed. Love. 1,000%. I'm in. And it's weird because over the weekend, she was at the SAG Awards, and she did this weird thing with Melissa McCarthy where Melissa McCarthy asked for her autograph, mm -hmm. and she signed her face. 
She signed Melissa McCarthy's face. Yeah, with a sharpie. Uh huh. I love seeing a, a an award show bit like just tank. That's you what know? it did. It tanked, <laughs> and she was like, and then Melissa started talking, and Billy like covered her mouth, and she's like, okay. So then Billy's just signing this. It didn't go anywhere, and also I was like, is this a real sharpie? Have you ever done any prop? Comedy? No. Okay, here's Have a, you? Yes. What? I, not like it wasn't a part of my thing, but when I was starting out, I was trying everything. Well, you I know? like the thing you do on your shows where you spin the wheel. Yeah, well, that's, that's fun. fun. That's just like a yeah. crowd work. That's not a prop. Give though. me some crowd work prompts kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, look at her. But no, when you do, cr yeah, I tried everything when I was a young comic. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. And I remember I had this bit with a um, with a, an astronaut helmet, and I did it on one show, and it murdered. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I got a new 10 minute bit. Like I'm in. And then the next time I did it, I put the thing on and it's like crickets. crickets. And the thing about prop comedy is the astronaut helmet's on your head. You can't be like, oh shit, this isn't working. You got to make it all the way through your 10 minute horrifying bit with this fucking like, lack of oxygen, lack of dignity, space. You're, so that's what's happening here is like yeah. they're doing the bit. They can't bail on the bit. Yeah. There's cameras on them. And there's something, the desperation of that feeling is uh, delicious to me. Yeah. Because, I mean, you definitely could see that because... Uh, I don't know why the pairing came out in the first place. I, I, I uh, they're not a natural pair. They're not. Yeah, they're you not. You don't put them together. Um, but um, here she is. She's like, oh, here we are together. And then she's like, you want to sign my face? And she says, okay. Oh, it is. It's just why? It, yeah. Just it's, why? I don't get it. It's just like, oh, the thirst. Oh. Putting down sick, and she like covers her mouth. Oh, There's he's her brother. Laughing? Yeah, that's Phineas. That's her brother. Oh, that's her brother. He yeah. has to because they make love yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I get so that. she yeah. covers her mouth yeah. and then just signs her forehead, and uh. everyone's like, "Wait, what? You did it, Justin. Hmm. You said wait what? I said wait what? Yeah, and I look, didn't even know I said wait what. I'm not here to judge you, but I think we can move past that. Okay. Because when you, to be honest, let I me didn't just, even know I said wait what. I know. And let me just say this honestly, I as, think as your it. friend. Let me say this yeah. as your friend. When you said it. I threw up in my mouth a little bit. Oh my God, like a same. little bit. Just a little just a, bit. Just a just, kernel oh, of corn. You know, just, uh, oh, just a, you know, uh, I was just in my, oh, uh, you know, just a little bit of throw up. You're in your uh, era. Uh, yeah. And it's like, we're watching a video on the interwebs and I'm throwing up on my mouth a little bit and you're all like, wait, wait what? what? And I'm just like, uh, 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 I'm like, uh, uh, cringe. You know? Super cringe. Super cringe. This yaz. was super cringe. That was, it wasn't a yaz, it was a na. It na, was a, na queen. It was nas. an Australian no. <laughs> it was a na. A nar. It's a na. It's a na from me, dog. It's a dog. <laughs> oh my God. Now sit back while I have some loud sex. That was the Australian accent, which was not good. Oh, yeah. Um, what else wasn't good? This bit on stage. You got the uh, best got segues in the business. We've got more stories. We have Bradley Cooper. He recalls his crazy pitch meeting at Beyonce's home for A Star is Born and says her husband, Jay-Z, was watching Judge Judy. Celebrities, they're just like us. They are. You know what I didn't know about? I didn't know that Bradley Cooper was just showing up at everyone's house. Pitching. Pitching. <laughs> a star is born. Was she almost Lady Gaga? Yes. You know Whoa. who else was almost Lady Gaga? Ooh. Adele. Adele. He like, uh -huh. he texted Adele and was like, hey, do you want to do this movie with me? And she just didn't text She's him like, back. She's like, hello. Yeah. No, it's I me. mean, what I'm. Hello. Hello. That, yeah. That, that was better? good. You did it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. She's all like, hello. She didn't even hello him. No, she, goodbye. She, yeah, like wrong number. Adele as in A Star Is Born. That would be kind of interesting. I mean, Beyonce would have been, what do they say? Snatched. Queen. Iconic. Queen. Yes. Shirt off. Mama. <laughs> Bayhive. Kamala Boots. Harris. <laughs> Kamala Harris. <laughs> Well, no, because there was like the K hive. Do you remember that? Yes. But they're like, don't come after the queen. And it was, uh, I just want to make really clear. I wasn't, what, I, okay. what I'd like to say to your listeners right to the is camera, please, the bit you. was about mm -hmm. the, the, the similarities between the K hive and the Bay hive. It mm -hmm. was not for me, it was in no way saying Beyonce looks like Kamala Harris. Yeah. I wasn't saying that. I wouldn't say that. That's not who I am as a Thank person. You. And if you come after me online, you know where I'm moving. 
Russia yep. immediately to get away from a woke. Goodbye, comrade. Goodbye, woke. We don't need you. I am Russian now. Leave the hate on some other page, That's you right. guys. Don't Not even come for in me. My comments, mm-hmm. guys. Because you yeah. think the Bayhive is bad? Wait till you get to the Mohive. Yeah, and the you know my what? people. Maybe some of you guys didn't think that I saw the Justin looks like an inbred cabbage patch comment, but you know what? I yeah. did. He did and see I, it. And I went into the mirror and I looked at the mirror and the reflection and I said, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> you were I like, see it. Thank you. You were like, wait, but it what? Still hurt I do a look bit. like that. Yeah. You look perfect. Thank you. You're a perfect man. Not- <laughs> um, and finally, KFC is out of control. They have created a cheesa. A cheesa? Ch- mm hmm. Wait, it's called the Cheesa? Not to be confused with the wings and Cheesa. It is <laughs> a chicken oh, pizza. Chicken. I thought they, it sounded like cheese. And pizza, and I'm like, you can't combine something that's already there. See, the marketing already failed. Cheesa? You thought it was cheese Chick- and chicken. Chizza, maybe. Che- Chizza. Yeah. Chizza. So it's a pizza with a fried chicken crust? It's a fried chicken. It's pretty much, look at this trash. It is just fried chicken with cheese and pepperoni on it. This is what is so aggravating about that family moving to Russia. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you don't want gay shit, we got anti-gay shit. It's right here. It's right there. (laughs) Fried chicken pizza is all you need to know about how much we're supporting the LGBTQ community. Get your kids from out under the bridge and get them a a cheese. Yeah, Yeah. get them a cheese. And while you're at it, listen, this is the WAP. This is the Kids Bop WAP. This is wings and pizza. You're right. (laughs) It's the WAP in one. Oh my, this is WAP. This is WAP. Wow. This is WAP. What a WAP world we live in. That is so wild. I don't understand because KFC tried to do this with like the keto chicken bun I lo- where they did like the burger with the chickens on it. Was it fried chicken though? Aren't you out of the keto zone once the batter is on the chicken? I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. But I, I but yeah, this is just, um, we need to, we need to, oh, it's pronounced chitza. Chitza. That doesn't sound more like chicken. That sounds like a Maltese or like some small. No, it sounds like an Italian man who uh, runs around on his wife. Oh, that guy is a chitza. Don't even. You can't trust him. He's a (laughs) chitza. It's just Mario and the princess. (laughs) It's Luigi. I can't help it. It's Mario. He's running around with the princess of Peach. Yo, she walking around with you know the ass in the air. What can I do? Oh my God, full snort. Whap right wow. there. That's a wet ass pterodactyl. That was a wet ass snort. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Um, so, yes, regardless of the pronunciation, the chitza description is as follows It's not pizza, it's chitza. Yeah, Two, okay, great. Great, guys. Go on, elaborate, please. They, they found people from the Kentucky public school system <laughs> just to keep on theme. It's What's our pizza. motto? It's chitza. It's chitza. What okay. is it? It's, well, it's, it's, it's chitza. It's two, 100%, not to be confused with 99.9%. Yeah. 100% white meat. Extra I'm telling crispy. you, once again, 100% white meat. You got to come back from Russia, mm-hmm. embrace what we have here in America. 100% white meat. White meat I only. Like my meat white, extra I'll tell you crispy. What, I, I got no problem with eating a pizza that's made of a, a crust of fried chicken, but I'm not trying to eat any dark meat. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and now, you. Now, what color is the marinara sauce? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it is zesty, which sounds a little Latin. I don't like that. I don't like zesty. I do not like zest. It's a what, zesty marinara. What shape is the pepperoni before it's been sliced? It's in a circle. But before it's sliced. It's in a long I don't like I like long. Okay. No, I don't like a long tube. <laughs> I don't like a sausage. In 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 Russia, uh-huh. the sausage <laughs> is in the shape of a blade. Okay. I like that. A noose. Like I a, like a that. Sickle. Yes. A, a they got a kielbasa. Sickle. Mm-hmm. It it touches, so it suggests an assassination <laughs> of a person that you find uh, odious by their lifestyle. Well, this will kill your heart. Yes. It is has melted mozzarella and crispy pepperoni. We feel like the pepperoni is what really pushes it over the That's edge what here. They, said. they did not. Yes. That pepperoni on top of chicken. KFC's Chitza is really taking us to some wild places. The other day, Justin, yeah, I was driving along in my neighborhood, mm-hmm. and I saw a billboard for a woman's OnlyFans account. It was a billboard that she had hired. Really? It was just like, "Hey, I'm whoever, and I'm I'll be putting a, <laughs> hey, a I'm whoever <laughs> I'll be putting a hairbrush handle up my asshole if right. you want to see it on OnlyFans." A, a, billboard. a billboard on Sunset. 
uh, on Echo Park. For, okay. And I thought, by the way, weird. Weird. Echo Park Boulevard. You'd think this isn't quite the demographic. Like, yeah. Clearly didn't get the memo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but this is what the people of Echo prob- Park want to see. Probably all she could afford, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, this is very similar to the Chitsa. Mm-hmm. When you see something physical that makes you go like, here is a manifestation of, of the rot of our society. It's in it's in it's in 3D form. Mm-hmm. Chitsa, a pizza with a fried chicken crust, mm-hmm. a billboard of a woman's only fan. There's something to me that goes, I see where society has gone wrong. Mm-hmm. And it's all wrapped up in one image. Chitsa, this woman's billboard. I, there's one on Sunset too, where it's a guy who's like, "Do you want to get famous?" I yes, and that I'm kind like, of thing. Oh. It just dry, well, you do. You, you, here's what you do when you see the "Do you want to get famous?" You drive past the billboard all the way down Sunset to the 101. Mm-hmm. You get on the 101. You drive 22 hours to uh, the Canadian border, through Canada to the Alaskan border, all the way to the edge of Alaska. You buy a small hut. You learn how to hunt. Uh-huh. You go bear hunting. You save the tallow in order to make candles. You live in that hut and you meditate on what. Went wrong in modern society. That's the only answer. Can you get Uber Eats with a Chitsa? Uh, can you Uber Eats Chitsa? Yeah. Well, you know what's across the water? What from Alaska, right? I think I know where you're going. Russia. That's right, Russia. Uh. They will bring you a chitza with a pepperoni that was not in sausage form. It's ground pepperoni because they don't play that in Red Square. Yes. Oh, Moshe Kasher. This has been such a wonderful, wonderful episode with you. Please tell everyone where they can find you. Please plug your book one more time. Well, what do you got going on? I got live stand up. When's this bad boy come out? This comes out uh, this week. Okay, great. I'll be in Tacoma this very weekend. Yeah. Uh, and I March will be second and third. Yes, March, first, and March second. first and second. Yeah. And then uh, two weeks from then, I will be at the Madison Comedy Club on State in Madison, Wisconsin. Perfect. I also have a show for the Netflix is a Joke Festival, May, I believe, 12th. Good. Uh, at the Troubadour. And my podcast is doing a live one on May, I think, the 4th. Netflix is a joke. I'm at Moshe Kasher. My book is available now. Go to my website. Find me. Fuck me. Don't do that. I used to wow. say that. I used to say that when I was a young man. Do they? I, I always thought it was so funny. Now that I'm a married man, uh-huh. you see these straight men on... Actually, probably gay guys do it, too. You see them like do these like um, these uh, signals, you know, to, to the, the women. the set? To the women in the audience. Oh. It's in their set. And it'll be like, oh, you know, so yeah, so I am single now. So these little like... Like flat, like oh, bread breadcrumb trails. So like, I am in a hotel this yeah. weekend. Yeah. No, you cannot fuck me. My doors I'm unlocked locked. and my ass is up. Happily married man. Uh, but uh, but yeah, find me online. Yes. Well, thank you guys and thank you for being here. And we will see you next time on the Just Saying podcast. Have a great week, everybody. Rate and review, subscribe, whatever. Yeah, do it. <laughs>